uh, coming to this uh, training uh, slash uh, product presentation. Um, extremely happy to have Don here from Mobile Demand. And uh, I'm really uh, thankful also for everyone who made it uh, this afternoon. It's a great occasion to learn about cutting edge products. And um, I'm going to share my screen um, just in a bit. I will um, make an introduction uh, about what we are doing, like I do in every webinar. And then uh, about five to seven minutes later, I uh, will let uh, Don uh, speak about their products and um, we're uh, extremely happy then to hear from him what he has to say today. So as I uh, said, uh, a little introduction, who is Accentech Technologies? We are a integrator that integrates hardware and software as a service into different verticals, uh, such as energy, uh, industries, uh, manufacturing, government, and uh, educational institutions. And uh, uh, we are basically the, the uh, on the in the inside picture is uh, our hardware, which comes, for example, from mobile demand, the uh, uh, rugged touchscreen computers. They are the market leader in their segment, and uh, uh, camera systems are input devices, and those are connected uh, to. IoT, um, and uh, they can display software as a service solutions, or they can be sold also as single devices. What's great uh, about mobile demand, and I, I haven't seen any competitor who's doing that, is that all their devices already have uh, the uh, uh, the app software installed, which would normally cost more. So mo uh, the, for example, the Microsoft devices, they all co come with MS uh, Microsoft 10 professional. And uh, you know what that costs on the market. So that's a really uh, great thing. But as I said, the overall picture is we're, um, integrating hardware input devices, which could be cameras, which could be sensors. And then we utilize software, which uh, in itself uh, is mostly software as a service, it means, meaning it runs on a browser and then connects um, through the internet uh, of things to cloud where then um, AI functionalities are being used uh, to optimize the system. And here you see a couple of applications. Um, you see on the left-hand side, a manufacturing application that could work with the digitalist workforce uh, management uh, and uh, a mobile demand uh, rugged computer the same as a warehouse application. Then you see on the right upper side, uh, our AI, uh, an example of I, our AI functionality uh, uh, with facial recognition. And then again, uh, down uh, on the picture, you see basically a industrial automation solution, also using a rugged uh, handheld computer. And basically the rugged handhelds from mobile demand can handle really any task, yeah, because they go up to i5 processors, um, but uh, Don will tell you much more um, after my intro. So this is just a little in, uh, showing uh, that the 
not only are these devices extremely intelligent, but they come with very practical uh, uh, additional tools that uh, makes them really easy to use. And um, this is Don uh, Klaassen. Um, he is a channel manager strategic sale for the Western US region. I'm extremely proud uh, and thankful to have him here um, today and to show us uh, more and in more depth uh, that's uh, what the products entail and uh, and uh, yeah that's my contact information I am um, uh, I'm taking a video of this and uh, and uh, we'll send that to you later so now I I'm inviting uh, Don here to Please be so kind to share his screen and to demonstrate what he has to show us. Thank you so much uh, for your attention. So I think you should be, uh, well, thank you, Volkmer. I, uh, and I, I just so appreciate the ability to be able to share this with the audience. And uh, you and I have been in constant uh, dialogue over the last couple of months, just uh, understanding your business and where rugged uh, mobility fits into that. So I just wanted to ask you, do you see my screen okay? Yes, it uh, looks great. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Um, so I'll, I'll start with this, and I, this is a fairly, you know, fairly casual presentation, but we've got a lot of slides to go through. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip through here fairly quick. I'm, a, I'm assuming that the technical folks on the, on the call uh, would appreciate that as well. But I think it's in, in, important for us to say we're, uh, we're a Midwestern United States company. Um, we're right in the heart of the breadbasket. Uh, there's a technology corridor here in Iowa, which is about 200 miles west of Chicago, um, between the um, uh, Iowa State University that uh, invented the first computer and uh, the University of Iowa, and we're right across the interstate from GoDaddy's uh, headquarters. So, uh, but anyway, we've um, our DNA in our company really came from Intermec. And so Intermec was a very forward, uh, inventive uh, company. Uh, had a thousand people just doing uh, frequency and barcoding and in, in, you know, inventing technology. Uh, and when they sold that to Honeywell, uh, our entrepreneurial uh, uh, genes and our, our owner and founder uh, created this company back in 2004. So that is, uh, that's where we uh, spend our time is really in rugged tablets. And so we confused uh, sometimes to being a, a handheld company, but even that six inch in the middle is a tablet. So it, uh, we stay very focused uh, because we, a lot of the applications need a larger screen. Uh, they can't get it done on just a three by four screen. So uh, we're well positioned for the uh, several levels of rugged ability, price points and capability uh, in our line. So I wanna go over a little bit about, you know, the natural or the traditional industries that are served by mobility. So that can be someone as very well known as maybe GM or uh, British Petroleum, something like that, but it uh, it's also in the in the in the middle space, the smaller companies, the mid-sized manufacturers, um, the people that are out walking and doing seed and genetic uh, analysis out in in the fields to create the the, the food we eat, um, as well as the packaging and grocery, uh, you know, all the logical industries that were not only early adopters, but they depend on mobility to do their work. You know, some of the new growth industries we're finding are, you know, they're, and they're basically saying that the mobile, the mobile space is only about 5% served. There's probably 90 to 95% of, uh, of the industry is, is yet to really uh, deploy and leverage mobility. So, uh, 
you know, the COVID is really accelerated this, this need to have a mobile device that has other functionality on it. So I can do curbside, uh, you know, curbside trans, uh, uh, transfers of food and I can take a payment there. Uh, public sector, you know, we're being scrutinized about uh, inefficiency. And so as we're, as we're looking, we're in the field and we're right where the job is being done and we can literally build the big bill of material and the parts can be, you know, coming out the right parts, I should say, that I can fix the, the work with. Um, food services, obviously delivery is becoming really big. And then, uh, you know, we're also trying to improve the, the overall patient experience in healthcare by using a mobile device to, uh, to check in. And I don't know how frustrated you get, but if someone hands me a keyboard or a clipboard to fill out with a pencil, uh, when I just gave them my information the month before, it was just aggravating to me. So uh, hopefully they'll start using uh, more of a tablet approach to that. And then interestingly enough, in the last year, we've last two years, we've really seen an advanced you know, uh, an acceleration of the global use of, uh, of that as well. So some of the organizations in, in our, our country are based here, but they've, they've, got, uh, they've got other locations around the world and, and we're seeing a lot of mobility uh, uh, cases there too. So as Volkmar said, you know, we're, we're, we're really in and around, you know, the, the sweet spot of our industry is really, you know, the manufacturing warehousing and probably field services and public sector is really starting to grow for us, um, as well as gas and oil. Uh, those are areas where their remote workers, you know, need to be connected at all times. So, in a couple of slides here, I just want to lay out some of the use cases that we have. And so, there's a tendency in, a, in an organization that has uh, say a fleet of fork trucks. That's the, what we call the low hanging fruit. And that would be an area where they would typically use uh, a rugged tablet in a dock. It probably is going to be mounted and powered by the power system in the uh, forklift. And they probably never take it off the forklift and they just get in, fire it up, do their shift, turn it off. The next shift comes in and, and that's how they do their inventory control uh, in that as well. But the other areas within, you know, a logical uh, warehouse or manufacturing sector is quality control is now asking for tablets. Um, We're seeing our, our 11 and 12 inch tablets being asked for doing uh, uh, both helping them with assembly as opposed to printing a large, uh, a large group of drawings. Anytime you print drawings, as soon as you print it, it's out of, uh, it's out of date. So those revisions being done in engineering that are changing and modifying it don't get into the printed stack, but by using a tablet, they can have uh, up-to-date uh, digital information. So, you know, doing task management, uh, for maintenance, being able to use the tablet to now, uh, maybe they can even run a YouTube video for assembly. Um, and everything, everything ties back to higher levels of productivity. Food services, as I mentioned uh, earlier, you know, it's gotten, uh, COVID has really accelerated the ingenuity and the, uh, the advancement of different ways to be mobile. And we certainly have, uh, have, uh, have, have been the, uh, you know, we've benefited from that. So, uh, but in the addition to that, you know, staff training, they've, uh, you know, they have a certain amount of things they have to do every four hours in a restaurant. They've got to take temperatures, they've got the food, they've got to record all this. And so now a tablet has a big, uh, a big play in that. So as, as you're looking at your customer list and, uh, and you've got people on there that 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 need mobility. This uh, you know these are good examples of uh, of how you might uh, you know might bring that to the customer. You know, grocery is a uh, grocery is a thin margin, high volume business, and so anything that we can do to impact their profitability, and efficiency, and market share, they typically will look at. 
And so we've uh, been using the Surface tablets uh, as well as our Flex and, and our, uh, and, you know, in our T-Series tablets to help uh, to capture barcodes, to do a lot of the work right where they're, you know, where they are stocking. Uh, there's a lot of wasted time between gathering information, walking to the back office, looking it up, put, putting in the system, and then walking back and doing the same thing. Um, when they use a, a, a tablet with the right software, uh, it significantly improves uh, their productivity. You know, field services is really ramping up. You know, as we see, you'll see a, a field of wind energy towers, highly regulated industry, uh, very intense uh, maintenance schedules and compliance on those. Uh, you know, we've got people that climb all the way to the rooftop to work on a chiller on, on top of those big buildings. Um, every time I fly into LA, I look at those huge warehouses and they've got they've got hundreds of chillers up there and they've got to work on that and they can't come back and forth up and down a ladder or back to their truck they want to have. Um, you know, they want to capture all the information. They want to uh, order the parts. They want to do everything from that tablet when they come down, as well as taking a picture um, as a proper as built. So lots of uh, lots of room for that. We thrive in this area. Our, our tablets are rugged enough to uh, to last for years and years uh, with 100% uptime, as well as having. Uh, the feature functionality in those to do several tasks uh, with a single tablet. So I threw a slide in here. To do oftentimes the wrong thing. So the allure of the consumer tablet at Best Buy seems like the right thing to do, but there is a, uh, there's clearly a benefit to a specialized, highly designed, engineered rugged tablet. When we look at the ROI over a, over a period of years versus a consumer throwaway strategy. So, you know, these are, these are, they're expensive for a reason. They're specially built for uh, specific needs. They withstand vibration like harmonics and uh, they're fully sealed. So, so you get it, you know, excellent uptime. You know, the, the real cost of this is if they fail uh, is, you know, you're gonna be without a tablet for several days. They're gonna have to write down the information they have. They have an impact on the entire stakeholder community if they can't, uh, if they can't adequately and quickly disseminate that information. Uh, organizations want information, as you all know, faster so they can get better insight. But you know, there's, there's hidden costs in there that basically displace any of the savings that you could have realized by buying a cheaper device. So um, you know, as you're doing proper ROIs or helping customers do that, it's, um, you know, it's really good to, to look at something that is very purpose built for that. So now I want to get into our, uh, our family of tablets. So we're the, broad of, the broadest line of tablets in the industry, and we've got three primary price points. We really don't believe that when you walk into a car dealership that everybody needs a great big four by four truck. You know, somebody needs a van, somebody needs a sports car, somebody needs a, uh, you know, a, mid, a mid-sized sedan. So with mobile demand, we have purposely built a, um, you know, a price point in that 495 to 595 range. It is great for collecting data and documenting things, taking inventory. Um, you've got a middle line in there that is highly rugged, just as rugged as any of the, of the higher end tablets, but has a mid-size uh, uh, CPU for better battery life. And then we've got the, the, big, the big rugged, devices that uh, you know, last for years and years and they're well equipped with uh, a variety of different options to do your job. So starting with our, uh, what we call our flex series, you know, you're, you'll have customers that just, you know, we literally sold 500 of these to a large uh, retail organization just to take inventory. They knew they had a, uh, 
they had a staff that would drop them and beat them up pretty bad. So they, they wanted something rugged. Yeah, I think uh, um, he broke up a little bit. Um, but they did so, not have to spend you know, significance for that. And device as well. Did I lose connection in that ballpark or did? So you kind of uh, lost connection and uh, also uh, you're not sharing anymore so you should uh, go back uh, to the yeah. share screen mode are we okay now i have to go by what you can see are you good thank you it's, it looks great now thanks okay okay So the next level, and, and uh, Volkmer has got a, a demo sample of this, but this is a, uh, we did an upgrade on a, on a thin 10 inch tablet that we had, and it's called the Flex 10B, but we, uh, we upgraded it with a Celeron, really, really speedy CPU. Um, we upgraded it to 128 gigabyte storage and, uh, and upgraded uh, the Wi-Fi with a with an Intel uh, dual radio uh, Wi-Fi, which is just uh, for the money. This is a five hundred ninety five dollar rugged tablet, but it is significantly uh, improved over, say, a consumer device. Um, uh, you know, with with a with a you know some sort of universal rubber cover or whatever. So this is kind of exciting. It has a, a full size three that you could plug in a, a tethered scan or two. Um, and so, uh, well worth, maybe you could start the conversation with some of the customers uh, with something like this, and you could just, you could work up into the, uh, the larger tablets um, as they have a need. So we've got a handheld six inch. This is a relatively new Android. So it's, uh, it's a two gig, 16 gig uh, storage in there, but it has a, uh, it has a Honeywell 2D scanner in it. And it's about three, Oh, four feet would be about max on that, but it has a nice uh, ergonomic uh, uh, hand, uh, handle on it where I could use that in a guard shack for taking in and out, you know, semi-trailer trucks are going in and out and I could just scan the barcode. I could have the customer sign, sign off on an on-screen application, but uh, very popular. Instead of paying 2,300 for a Motorola, you can now get a very similar, uh, uh, experience for just seven ninety five, so that's been a been a nice uh, device for us. So now I get into our mid our mid uh, it's mid performance because it's purposely got a quad core uh, processor in it, and what that means is I get better battery life, and they're specifically designed for. Um, a cloud based or Wi Fi based application that's not heavy. Uh, on the processor, they've got uh, both of these devices, the eight and 10 inch have got hot swappable batteries. So if you, you get a little warning on your screen and you can just pop out the battery, pop in a hot battery and you don't lose your data, you just keep working. Uh, they are LTE capable. So for field service people, um, they even work on uh, and are, uh, are fully uh, supported for private networks as well. So that's uh, uh, those are very nice appointed with uh, with several I/O ports for additional peripherals. But this is uh, these are really nice tablets, and they they come in in kind of that thirteen hundred to fifteen hundred range. You're always going to be somewhere between four or five hundred under Zebra, and our customers that compare the both, you know, would say that they probably prefer mobile demand, but. Uh, you know, Zebra is like selling IBM in the old days. You know, nobody ever got fired for IBM and uh, just because they were big, but the innovative, uh, you know, sort of uh, 
smaller, nimble, innovative companies like Mobile Demand, uh, you know, are are building the right price point and, and probably adding in a little bit more quality to the device. So now we get up into our high performance items, and these are be ideal for um, somebody who's a three to five year expectation, uh, probably going to be hooked on a vehicle uh, like a forklift. You know, forklifts don't have a lot of uh, suspension in them. They're, they're the, the biggest thing that uh, will be the demise of a tablet is the shock uh, going from, uh, you know, uh, in the uh, deviations in the floor of a warehouse. And so they're just constantly slamming up and down and it, uh, it can be devastating to the wrong tablet. So we're pretty happy about the idea that we've, uh, we have installs that have been in place for three, four or five years, never come off the forklift and never failed. So there's a, there's a host of applications like docks, powered uh, you know, holders, direct power, options. So the interesting thing about mobile demand is that you can get everything in one order. So you're not going to have to run around looking for a mount, looking for power. We, we can put it all in one bill of material and ship it to your customer. So from the forklift mounted side, you'll see the back of our power dock has got two serial ports. And serial ports are really important so you don't have to strain relief a, uh, a tethered scanner on a USB. Uh, that would be the Achilles heel of the whole, the whole device uh, because the, uh, the, the USB is just not feasible for attaching uh, you know, in a rugged uh, environment. So each of our tablets has a specific uh, docking system and all of our docks are, are mated up and work with, uh, with RAM mounts. So RAM is probably as universal as anybody in the industry. So you would hook onto the hook onto the forklift, have an arm and a ball that would fit to the back of our dock, and and uh, that would be uh, that be set up. There's an aerial uh, port there for somebody who needs a GPS or Wi-Fi antenna uh, in a particular condition. You just never know what you're going to get in these warehouses. You know, there's a variety of different levels, and uh, and we can adhere to that. So this is just a slide on it's all about the ports. I mean, so we've, we've uh, different than a lot of uh, rugged tablets. We've got an RJ45 there, which allows you to put a network cable in there. And, and more interestingly enough, you can oftentimes update your software. So IT departments really like that. And there's also two full size uh, uh, USBs on there as well as uh, HDMI. So. That is very, uh, very nice to have in there. All IP65 uh, uh, protection for forced water and, and dust and those sort of things that would aggravate a tablet uh, that wasn't built as well. So we, we consider ourselves kind of experts in mounting. So we've, uh, not only does our custom shop do innovation for some of our customers, you see that, um, you see that yellow, uh, one that's in the uh, foreground is got the uh, that's got rare earth magnets on that and will hold up, up to 50 pounds. So if you're 300 feet in the air uh, working on a wind tower, it's kind of nice to have a magnetic mount up there to to uh, uh, to mount your tablet on. And uh, as well as if you can imagine uh, an old warehouse full of uh, it's got iron uh, girders or steel girders, uh, I beams that sort of thing. You don't have to drill a hole through that. You can just mount it on the magnetic mount. So it's uh, mounts are made specifically for each of our tablets, and we've got uh, we've got a variety of those things depending on what the use case is. So you can see, you know, we could have uh, we could have an insurance adjuster in the down right corner. You could have a uh, doctor's office on the left. Uh, a lot of our customers will use the mobile uh, the mobile tablet to run two monitors on their desk with a keyboard. And then if they need to go do quality checks, they just pop it out of the dock and then go out and run their, their mobility thing without having to balance it on your, you know, on your arm. Like, uh, you know, we'll see them uh, using laptops and it just doesn't work so well. So that gives you a little idea on the extensiveness of the mounting that we do. We also, um, 
we built uh, several years ago, we patented a, a thing called the, the, uh, the snap mount. And so the snap mount uses a RAM arm, but it also has a, uh, there's a wedge uh, snap mount rail on the back of every one of our tablets and, and all of our, uh, uh, our cases. So I'll show you a little bit in another diagram how those work, but uh, so we, cause we do build cases for the surface and we also build them rugged cases for the iPad. So there's the surface and, you know, a surface alone um, is not very durable. They, they, they don't do very well if you drop them on a cement floor. And so um, cases are not new to that business, but cases that are as well built and productive as ours are, um, you know, we kind of hold a, uh, we, we hold the top of the market share in that uh, premium case side. And that's partly because we have a lot of fastener connections around the case that allows us to put a uh, MSR on the side. Uh, that's a real sense 3D camera up on the top. We've got a bracket for that, uh, as well as the ability to even mount a surface on a forklift. So um, those are, uh, have really worked well. So in addition to that uh, protection that we offer to the surface, we have also, um, you know, I talked about the attachment fasteners and, and the ways that we can innovate. Um, we put a, uh, the first, we're the first to market with a Honeywell scanner on a surface case. And there is, uh, it is an explosive level of interest uh, on these. We're just finishing up our DFS uh, certification for the enterprise uh, uh, community. And as soon as that is ready to ship, I'm, uh, it, it is going to be, uh, it'll be incredible. So at, uh, uh, we're, the, we're the only one on the planet at this point. I don't know how long we'll share, we'll enjoy that share, but, uh, but it's gonna be fun while, it, while it lasts. The other thing is, is that we do both on the Surface Go and the Surface Pro, we attached a, a rugged uh, MSR, and this is based on MagTech. And their latest, uh, it's got uh, level two, level three encryption, and it's got uh, a lot of the state of the art uh, card reader technology in that. And then they look to us to build a rugged case around it that would withstand, uh, you know, teenagers and a variety of different levels of help, you know, in, in the restaurants and places where those are used. So the other thing we've got is we've got chip and pen. So, you know, now if somebody wants to run a credit card, if there's a large furniture store or a, uh, you know, it, it could be a, it could be a variety of different places where we're going to take a card uh, to pay for a meal or pay for uh, maybe a retail item. And so we have that as well. Um, I see. So I did a transition into our, our, we have an innovation center. So so several of the guys, I would say four of them from Intermex stayed with us. And one of the reasons why we can innovate so quickly and, uh, and meet customer needs as they happen is that we, uh, we have an innovation group up on second floor. And uh, so when you have a customer that says, I love this, but if it only had that, it's kind of how I say, dude. you know, we, we love your case, but, if, but what we need is a, you know, this. So what we typically do is start those dialogues and potentially you can take a, uh, and add value to a customer that, that couldn't find that capability across the market space. This is one of those things that came out of that. And so it looks small, but it is triple the magnetic strength of the surface charging, the port charging uh, system. And so in certain uh, environments where, you know, People need to, they need to charge it and absolutely, uh, you know, when they come in in the morning, they can't have a dead tablet. So these will hold in there better. And then also if they wanted to have it on a vehicle, in a car or on a truck or in a, or on a forklift, you know, this gives a nice positive solid, uh, you know, power connection. So that's just one of the things that came out of our innovative group. And it's in the, uh, it's in the Microsoft Surface catalog. Um, this month. 
the the other thing that's going to be very innovative innovative is a uh, we have patents now uh, four patents on uh, mobile volume box dimensioning. So we've got technology, uh, we've got software in here. Plus, we use a real sense uh, laser lidar camera in this, and we'll be able to take uh, in a warehouse. We'll be able to quickly acquire the uh, the dimensions and the uh, estimated weight of a package so that it would be going in uh, be parted out and put in trucks as well as uh, what I've found out through this uh, this journey is that uh, people don't want to build any more warehouses they need to optimize their space their shelves and the big retailers need to do the same thing and so we're really excited about uh, a summer launch of uh, of what they call X dim. And so it's, it's gotten a lot of credibility, a lot of profile for mobile. Vision of my, uh, my part, I know it was long. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry to torture you on that, but I think I did that in, I think I did that maybe in about 40 minutes. So that's pretty good. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, um, Don, uh, thank you so much. Um, maybe you can, um, stop your share button, or I could do that. Yes, I can and do it. Then... Yeah. Okay. Then we could go back to the screen. Wonderful. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, let me just open the uh, Q and A here. I have no questions so far, so please be. Uh, Oh, I have one is raising hands. Please uh, type your questions either here or in the um, uh, in the chat box. Uh, oh, once one moment, yeah. Someone raised his hand. Who raised his hand? Please, uh, whoever raised this hand, please do it again. From Marvin. Marvin. Rich. Rich. One second. Okay. Rich. And feel free while we're uh, getting that organized, but feel free to call me um, with anything. And it's, uh, you know, as we share okay. information and help you walk through the, uh, you know. The Rich, you need to unmute yourself. Okay. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Okay, great. How's it going, Don? Thank you. Hey, for really good. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, the, um, the questions I had was... Um, could these uh, tablets be, could they use DC power? Is there some some way of? They, they do, yep. Like so from the, from the battery. We, yeah, so what we, what we do, we've got DC, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay, so we've got uh, in our accessory uh, group, we've got, uh, we've got DC power for all of the, all the tablets. Um, and the uh, and the surface as well. So they usually have got a uh, cigarette lighter kind of uh, side to that. But then we've also got one that is uh, can be hooked up direct to the to the uh, to the power in the car or truck or. Okay, great, cool. Yeah. And then, Mike, uh, if you want to unmute yourself to ask a question. The warranty uh, you, question. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Perfect, Mike. Yes, uh, I was just. My question was just a warranty. Like a uh, customers ask, you know, because we are selling the rugged PCs and they're su supposed to be built to last. If they ask a uh, warranty information, do we have like a any kind of like lifetime warranty or limited lifetime warranty um, on the tablets? Yeah, you 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 think they like to keep them for a lifetime, but no. Typically, it's pretty typical to have a three-year manufacturer warranty. So, the low entry-level units that are just four ninety-five or five ninety-five, those are a one-year manufacturer warranty. 
And then there is a one or two year extended warranty in rugged for anything that might happen, you know, in the workplace. So broken screens, you know, drop them, break, you know, a variety of that ports are knocked out of it. If you've got that, uh, if you've got that level of, uh, of uh, what we call X protect or extra protection. Uh, and then on the higher end tablets that are used like when the forklifts and things, those are typically a three year X protect. And so, you know, and they get a they get an allotment of like four or five percent of their fleet that will just simply replace in a year. Um, so yes, there's a there's a plan. There's a there's a uh, you know factory warranty on on all the components in in the device for you know that are motherboard those sort of things that might be manufacturing oriented. And then there's the whole damage warranty too that we can put on those at, at an extra charge. That help? Appreciate that. Yeah. And, and we do on a couple of our units, depending on uh, it, it's by customer, you know, typically there's a there's a, a dialogue we have with the customer to add a fourth or fifth year. So, and that's pretty common in the industry. So um, as I also understood is like the lower end units come uh, with one year warranty, but then you can buy extended uh, warranty. Is that correct? That is, that's correct. So um, maybe I have a couple of questions. Um, first of all, I, I really loved your presentation and thank you so much and I appreciate uh, the length of it and the debt you went into. Um, if we talk now, um, all of our sales uh, people are more or less new to the industry. They have extensive uh, connections uh, to the industry they've been working for. So what would you consider a really good entry industry right now that's hot? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, our, our biggest ones are, you know, they're, it's always warehouse and manufacturing and field services typically. And so whether it's warehouse for consumer or, or packaging, right? boy, once you, you just keep hammering on those packaging facilities, they really use a lot of mobility. And we've, we've got some wonderful um, success stories and customers uh, that we can reference uh, on those, but you know, typically they're uh, the reason. Sometimes they're looking for ours, or they'll land on our unit. Is that they just don't? They're under such tight budget constraints. So there's about three things that really are in your favor, and one is they they just they need to get the same kind of tablet, but they only have two thirds of the money to do it, and so. They can't go get their uh, Panasonic tough book anymore. They've got to go out and look for other pricing. And so the, the other thing is there's a real disruption in the, in the uh, supply chain right now. I mean, Zebra's never had uh, the, the length of lead times that they've got now. Uh, Motorola's got some issues with you know, they'll promise eight weeks and they can get it, can't get it for 12 or 14. The, the thing that we've done as a small, nimble, innovative company, we've had to create a program where we have about three, three months of run rate on the shelf. So if you have a customer that needs 30 and they need them next, you know, uh, in two weeks, there's a darn good chance that we can ship those. And typically when we watch even distribution, uh, working with maybe um, whether it's Honeywell or it's G-Tech or it's, uh, you know, it's just one of the uh, tablet manufacturers, they don't show any inventory. So what they do is they take the order at distribution and then they go ahead and order it from the manufacturer. So that's, that's where you get into that 10, 12 week lead time. Um, and then the other thing is, 
once you get to know our tablets, you'll see that they're very scalable. And so we've got options to go to four gigabytes of RAM, eight gigabytes of RAM, or 16 gigabytes of RAM. That doesn't happen typically across the industry. And yet the customer is just, you know, there's more, more space for the OS. They're, they're taking lots of pictures. They're capturing a lot of data. And, and, uh, and so they're, they're hedging their bet and getting a little more RAM, getting a little more space for swap. Uh, and then they might, you know, they may need an internal scanner, but then we're willing to do things like we had a customer, a large outside services, uh, wind energy customer that, uh, wanted us to put a FLIR thermal camera on it. And so we found a way to attach that thermal camera into the USB to power it. And now they can take one tablet up into the tower and they do predictive failure on these turbines to make sure they're not outside their heat threshold. So they can also use the, the uh, RS uh, or the RJ45 port to plug in an ethernet to do the diagnostics on, the, on, on, a, you know, on a seven or $8 million engine. So it's those kind of things that you're, you're looking for when, you know, but the customers are, are typically looking right now because uh, they're, they're really constrained budget wise. They also, these large organizations are, are like a virus. They're just pestering them constantly. And, they're, uh, and they routinely are taking care of their biggest customers and letting their service fall off. And we're, we're nailing a lot of business in that regard too. So I, the one thing I'd advise all of you is that until you know the line really well, uh, set up, be the quarterback, set up a meeting uh, with myself or Mark um, with the customer so you can introduce the line to them. We can help you with the talk track and, and find the justification that they're looking for. Uh, and then once you witness a couple of those, you'll be, you know, you'll be fully knowledgeable. But uh, we're available for that. We're not going to schedule you out two weeks. We can we can do it quick, and uh, it makes all the difference in the world of how the, how your customer looks at you. And uh, but somebody tell me I'm an inch I'm an inch deep and a mile wide, you know. And and we tend to be a mile deep and an inch wide. So we'll we'll help you out. Well, that's wonderful that you support us, and. Uh... Could you, when someone brings an opportunity, obviously as an organization, we want to secure that opportunity with you. Um, at what stage uh, shall we put that in the system? I think if you sense that they've got, if you've asked the appropriate questions and they are open to looking at us, um, you, to get a deal registration, it must be 25 seats. It's typically used as a, as a registration in a competitive situation, but if it's 25 seats or better, um, I would, uh, you know, if you think it's a 50-50 deal uh, or they've, they've, they've got a genuine interest, um, they're willing to look at us, I, I'd get it regged. Okay, would, I will, I will I would do, do that it. then. Okay. Yeah. They're 90, 90 days yeah. for a deal reg. They are not hard, you know, if, if we've had dialogue and you're moving it along, uh, you know, we'll redo that for another 90 days without, without any problem and you'll get, you'll get first priority. Yeah, so I will stay in uh, very close uh, contact with you regarding that. Oh, and something you'll like too, there's an extra 5% margin. So that's, that's good, so. And, and the other thing we do is that we're starting you out as as a uh, a registered reseller. It um, it's it is you know where the good news is we don't we don't have an overinflated list price. So when Motorola goes in, they say, "Hey, we'll get you a forty percent discount." You know, I mean, you it's all about the street price because the capability and functionality when we stand up against Zebra. We're always a couple hundred dollars higher than them, and we've probably got a couple more features than than they do. It's just that, you know, people are 
Some people just like to buy zebra because it's a zebra ecosystem. But, but the other thing that a lot of people don't like, they don't want to go 100% zebra. They, do, they don't mind their printers and labels. They don't mind their handhelds, but they, they don't want to, you know, want them to control every aspect of them. And, uh, or they have a need that's outside of, you know, what they can provide. So um, I think you'll find that uh, that street price is aggressive. And then if you have a really large uh, opportunity, you know, we'll talk about special pricing. So we're, uh, we want to win it just, you know, with you and, and uh, we're not going to let something like that get in the way. So what we do is we just, uh, you know, we have a, a talk about just special pricing, make sure that we're competitive and you're passing on the, the, uh, the margin and uh, we're making you whole at the same time too. So we have some of our uh, sales agents have um, uh, had uh, previous exposure to um, construction and um, also restaurant industry. Could you elaborate a little bit on, on that? Yeah. So, and you know, restaurant, everybody knows that that's really changed, but uh, we, uh, so we're just launching this, uh, our flex series with an MSR on that. And, and we've gotten a little bit of feedback that, you know, chip and pin, I didn't realize this, but MSR people pay uh, maybe a quarter of a percent more for uh, an MSR than they do a chip and pin because of the security. But at the end of the day, a lot of the folks in the, in the smaller boutiques and pantries and a various amount of places, um, garden centers are where we're having some success. I mean, they're, they're totally uh, walking around and, and, and building the, you know, building the uh, list of things, the shrubs that the lady's buying. And when they get it to the end, they just swipe her card and put, put it in her car. And so there's a little bit of that going on, but uh, quick serve restaurants um, seem to be the target. Um, sometimes that might only be 18 or 20 restaurants, but they're they're looking for something to you know to, to do a better job. And then the other one would be delivery of products like de delivery of oil or or you know delivery rock or or something they're delivering where they need payment, you know, when they drop it on the ground is a is a place we're seeing uh, uh, some some excitement in around those areas. I'm not and sure. Did I answer that? Okay. Oh, perfect. And what about the uh, car industry? I'm talking about um, car dealerships. Yeah. So the 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 thing that we do there is that we're the one that's kind of the favorite. Uh, is our 8650 eight inch rugged. And, and it's what they're doing. A lot of them are both managing fleets of cars and they have to go up to the window and use the scanner to, um, uh, to catch the VIN number. And so they'll have a piece of software in there that will recognize the VIN and they just start stacking those in there. And they might even take a GPS point to that, but so they're looking at location, inventory, um, tracking. Uh, it could be somebody, a large repair shop. A lot of the repair shops are using them now because they scan them. I think, um... Yeah, let's wait till he comes back. Facilities, we had a large group. I remember, uh, you know, we, we're, we're pretty, uh, we're not very well known, but, uh, but we are in a lot of uh, automotive manufacturing facilities, you know, maybe transmission plant for Honda, uh, you know, big plant for, for, uh, for up in, up in Detroit for Chrysler. I mean, they, and, and I can't get them to get rid of the tablets. I mean, they have to go end of life before they, <laughs> before they, they get rid of them. We, you know, there's nice to have them for five or six years, but I know you guys would rather have a three year refresh. Yeah. So you were kind of breaking up when you were talking about mechanical 
because uh, one of our attendants here, uh, Marvin, he, uh, he yeah. was very interested in uh, in the mechanical part. Maybe you could elaborate oh. on that. Yeah, it's uh, so more and more are we seeing uh, a tablet out on the bench for the individual mechanic because they're not only do they subscribe potentially to a maybe a snap on uh, software or Bosch or somebody who's got a mechanic software and then they uh, can see it right there and then they can also go to a series of videos in YouTube to actually understand how to put that uh, uh, a clevis on or so you know something that they're not you know they have to put the lifter on at the same sequence that they have to put the rod through there and, and so those sort of things are becoming very helpful for the mechanic um, and it's usually it's driven an awful lot of times by an ISV that it, that has the software and so those relationships uh, with the ISV community are, are uh, important as well so that's that's kind of where we're seeing that uh, we've got we've got it done really well uh, with the ground transportation in the aviation business. So uh, small regional aviators, small I mean anybody who's moving around, um, you know parcels and things to be shipped somewhere. I mean are all using uh, you know this and they they've got. They've got an idea. They get with well, the tracking is what it, it's all about. Really, is tracing and tracking. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, yeah, we're kind of uh, coming to the end, towards the end. But um, are there any more questions? I encourage everyone um, here to just raise your hand, and then I will unmute you. If not, I will follow up later. Yeah, and, and feel free to my phone number or my uh, emails on the other end. But if you have an opportunity that you're just wondering about or you want to do some account planning, let's just look at some of the accounts you've got good relationships with. We're under NDA and uh, and we can tell you what we've done or maybe, you know, what I've been doing is looking for, uh, you know, four or five, six common types of industries where we've had success and then going to discover.org and then doing a list of like accounts, you know, very similar businesses and taking that same story to them. We may be able to do some of that together as well. So we're pretty accessible just to, but, but again, if, if you've got somebody who, uh, you know, introduce the manufacturer, you'll look like a hero and, and we're that, and then getting a demo to the customer is absolutely important. I mean, the the first demo that gets there typically they don't they don't look for anything else, and so they have our our product in their hands. They really uh, tend to like it. Yeah, we as Exantec will organize the demos, and um, so um, and uh, also coordinate the account management. But uh, yeah, well, thank you so much for, uh, for this extremely informative um, webinar and your knowledge is obviously great, uh, much better than mine. So that's the reason we, we had you here. Would you be able to share the presentation with me um, after this? So I, I can forward that to the salespeople. That would be great. And then remind uh, everybody, remind all your salespeople to go up to that partner.mobiledemand.com. And that's our, there's not a password for it. There should be, but it's our, uh, it's our partner portal for the sales team. And everything you're going to find up there is a sell sheets, uh, spec sheets, video, great videos. Um, and so everything you might need. And if you can't find it there, just give me a call. Sounds good. Thank you so much okay. uh, for uh, um, talking to uh, 
and presenting to our Exantec Technologies sales yeah, agents. We're excited about uh, we're excited about yeah. your, your your excitement, and uh, we want to yeah. make uh, make your guys some money for sure. Yeah, sounds great. Um, okay, so that uh, was a great uh, presentation. Thank you.